message I have for this morning is don't sleep through the revolution. And you heard from our wisdom story, the seeds from the where lecture that Dr. King spoke to us, a gathering of Unitarian Universalists. But I'll start somewhere else. At a commencement speech a few years ago, Navy SEAL Admiral William McRaven gave an impassioned speech telling those graduates if they wanted to change the world, start by making your bed. McRaven said to them, if you make your bed every morning, you will have accomplished the first task of the day. It will give you a small sense of pride. It will encourage you to do another task and another. And by the end of the day, that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed. Making your bed will also reinforce the fact that the little things in life matter. If you can't do the little things right, you will never be able to do the big things right, he said. And if by chance you have a miserable day, it happens, you will come home to a bed that is made, that you made. And a, bed gives, a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better. So if you wanna change the world, Start off by making your bed. So I've listened to that speech probably a dozen times now. And you know what? I make my darn bed each and every day. If you want to change the world, make your bed. This idea, this simple act is actually grounded in the principle of fractals. Do I have any science geeks here? My congregation is filled with lots of science folks. Yeah, I'm getting a few smiles. Thank you. Now, hear me out. Come on with me. You know you got to love fractals. So fractals are a repeating pattern where the smallest unit of that pattern repeats over and over from a micro level to a macro level. These fractals can be seen in seashells, if you look at them closely, all the way up to the shape of the galaxies. Fractals occur all over this beautiful creation that we are charged with sacred stewardship of. Prophetic author that you heard for our reading, Adrienne Marie Brown, she writes about fractals in her book, Emergent Strategy. She writes, when we speak of systemic change, we need to be fractal. We must create patterns that cycle upwards. We are microcosms our friendships, our relationships, our systems, our communities, our systems. And so Adrienne Marie Brown, as a black queer woman and Afrofuturist, she reminds us that the small is all. The small reflects the large as we imagine a world that is possible and make it a reality through living with intention and deep alignment. Fractals remind us that our lives are the building blocks for the beloved community that we seek, for the justice that we seek, for this holy transformation towards the highest good in the world that we seek. Fractals remind us that to bear racism, even in the most mildest forms, is to permit the entire enterprise to flourish. We are microcosms, my beloved family. We are a part of a whole complex universe, this interdependent web of all of existence of which we are a part. Now, the charge of this day, this time in our remembering is that call to wake up in response to witnessing this moment in history, this uprising around the world. And so maybe part of the answer is to make your bed. But really, the charge for this day is to live a fractal faith, as I like to call it. In honor, in honor of the legacy of Dr. King, just as the modern Poor People's Campaign, we go back to our fundamentals. And we are the fundamentals that make up our world, that either make justice possible to flourish or to actively shore up the mass deceptions that keep us sleepy and unaware of our complicity. Thus we embrace a fractal faith. So what is a fractal faith? It sounds good, right? 
A fractal faith is one born of deep integrity where we know who we are. We know whose we are. We know who we are, and that means that each and every thought and act embodies the totality of our being. We embody our love. We practice our courageous love. We live our faith in the world with every breath, with every love, with every justice. A fractal faith means that our religious and spiritual values permeate the core of our being. When we move from a place where the inherent worth and dignity of every person is sacred, we've heard that term before, the inherent worth and dignity of every person, our first principle. That's why we bear witness to racial terrorism. That's why we bear witness to the enduring legacy of slavery and colonialism and systemic injustice. That's why we show up for justice and side with love. That's why we as Unitarian Universalists, we draw the lines from racism and classism and sexism, homophobia, transphobia, and understand intersectional justice. No one is free when others are oppressed. That's why we bear witness to mass incarceration rates, gerrymandering, the school to prison pipeline, the lack of access to resources, jobs, healthcare, education, safe living areas. That's why we proclaim Black Lives Matter. It's why we are called to wake up wake up to the suffering and the disenfranchisement of others. So we also wake up to our participation and to the roots of our own suffering. The road to integrity, to that fractal faith that I'm talking about begins with that waking up to obliterate racism and internalized racism, to slaughter sexism and homophobia and anti-Semitism within us to wake up to our participation in systemic injustice and embrace that fractal faith and reject the lies that keep us drowsy in our complicity. It's the lies of toxic individualism, unreliant on community. It's the lies of unchecked privilege and power. It's the lies of scarcity and hoarding control. It's the cradling lies that keep us asleep. A fractal faith is a faith grounded in the love ethic that Dr. King spoke to us, that agape love, a love that connects us with the humanity of each and every person. Dr. King spoke these words, most revolutions in the past have been based on hope and hate with the rising expectations of the revolutionaries implemented by hate for the perpetrators of the unjust system in that order. I think the different thing about the revolution that has taken place in our country is that it has maintained the hope element. And at the same time, it has added the dimension of love. Dr. King said, throw us in jail. Throw us in jail and we will still love you beat us, intimidate us, slander us, and we will still love you. When Dr. King sto stood before the thousands of Unitarian Universalists back in 1966, he exhorted them, he exhorted us to a higher love ethic and reminded them, be assured that we will wear you down by our capacity to suffer and one day we will win our freedom. We will not only win freedom for ourselves, we will so appeal to your heart and your conscience that we will win you in the process and our victory will be a double victory. So I, I think about this often, this love ethic, this call for us to practice courageous love, that agape love again and again, in the face of bigotry, bigotry, violence, and hate. The world is so hard right now. The problems facing each of us, our communities and our society can feel so overwhelming. It was mentioned, I, I serve a congregation right outside of Washington, DC in Rockville, Maryland. 
And as you may have seen on the news, every day there are people showing up in front of the White House of all colors, shapes, and sizes, black people, white people, brown people, all ages, children, families, waking up to this moment. What is the message of this time? We are all deeply interconnected. Our love, our courageous love will transform this world, will break down the walls. And you may be able to see, there's a poster right behind me and that's activist Angela Davis. And on it says, walls turn sideways become bridges. So that's part of that fractal faith that I'm talking about. We embrace that fractal faith because the small is all. These microcosms of beloved community that we seek start with us. Perhaps you really know that deep within your bones right now. In our ways that we are so separated, we are, I don't know how far apart this congregation is, but I imagine you're across communities, across great spaces. You're not able to gather together to be with one another, to, to reach out and to feel connected. And yet there are 63 connections on this line right now and probably over 80 or 100 people because I see a lot of people are not alone in your connection. We are connected, we are interconnected. So let's go back to what Dr. King spoke to us. Dr. King talked about becoming maladjusted to the evils of racism and our support of physical, spiritual, and psychic violence. He said, I call upon you to be maladjusted and all good people, good people of goodwill to be maladjusted to these things until the good society is realized, that beloved community. He said, I never intend to adjust myself to segregation and discrimination. I never intend to become adjusted to religious bigotry. I never intend to adjust myself to economic conditions that will take necessities from the many to give luxuries to the few and leave millions of people perishing on a lonely island of poverty in the vast Midst, in the midst of a vast sea of prosperity. If you're curious about that, go find out more about what the Poor People's Campaign may be doing in your area. When we wake up and become maladjusted, it becomes impossible to live a life of mendacity, to swallow the lies that keep us separate and allows injustice to flourish. Beloved family, don't sleep through the revolution. So perhaps this day for you, it begins with small steps. Make your bet, turn off the news. Let me say that again, for the love of all that is holy, turn off the news every once in a while to preserve your sanity. And really don't ever read the comments. Meet your neighbors. Plant a garden. Well, everything grows in Hawaii. I don't even need to say that, do I? Bear witness when evil flourishes. Speak the names of those who never knew justice in their lifetime. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Trayvon Martin, Tamir Rice, Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, Philando Castile, Justin Howell, Freddie Gray, and more and more and more. Remember, find those tender spots of fractured integrity within your spirit and make them whole. Show up and side with love. Embrace a fractal faith. Remember, you are a microcosm of this beloved community that we're seeking, that we're building a sacred part of this interdependent web of all of existence. Even in this time of pandemic, we are connected. We are united in love and care. My freedom, my freedom, my spiritual liberation, and my very life are bound up into yours and vice versa. I could go on. 
But in closing, I'll share more words from the prophet and writer, Adrian Marie Brown. She writes, I am living a life I don't regret, a life that will resonate with my ancestors and with as many generations forward as I can imagine. I'm attending to the crisis of my time with my best self. I am of communities that are doing our collective best to honor our ancestors and all humans to come. Amen. Blessed be, and may it be so.